Before we talk about complex numbers, let's talk about another example, a very, very interesting example, actually. f of x is a piecewise function equal to e to the negative 1 over x squared if x is not 0. I can't plug in 0 into that because I'd be dividing by 0. But I do want to define this function to be 0 when x is 0. And with that, you need an extra double equal sign there. Otherwise, mathematic, it gets sets x equal to 0, and we don't want that. What does this function look like? Over the interval from negative 5 to 5, looks like that. Never really seen a graph like that before, have you? Looks very flat near the near 0. Looks almost horizontal. What would happen as we zoom in closer and closer? Yeah, it's looking very flat near zero. Continue to zoom in closer and closer to zero. Look at the vertical axis. 10 to the negative 63. What is this? Is there corners on the graph? Is it not differentiable there? That's deceiving. It actually is differentiable. Try one more. Oh, gives up two. It, you can't probably see that message, but it says too small to represent as a normalized machine number. All right, let's try this. 10 to the negative 249 power. Actually, if I type in, if I enter things as fractions like this, it will uh, go ahead and compute it amazingly. So that's one over a million, 10 to the negative six being plugged into F, the output is, uh -huh, smallest number you've ever seen in your life. 10 to the negative 434,294,481,904 power. But guess what? That's, that's, that's humongous compared to infinitesimals, right? Wow. Infinitesimals don't really exist in the standard real number system. They do exist in the hyper real number system, which is called non-standard analysis. But that's the subject where I looked at the book and I put it back on the shelf after reading one page. <laughs> it's way too hard. It's definitely graduate level. It just also wasn't that interesting looking. Okay, this function is very, very flat near zero, but it, it, but it only equals zero when x equals zero. Otherwise, you plug in something ever so slightly non-zero, the output's not zero. Hmm. I wonder what the derivative of this thing is at zero. Does it exist? and the second derivative, and the third derivative, and the fourth derivative. Oh, one more for good measure, fifth derivative. Mathematics is claiming they all exist and they're all zero, which kind of makes sense. The graph is basically horizontal near the origin. Not actually horizontal, but so close that it's believable that all these derivatives are zero. And what this means is the Taylor series for this thing call it p sub infinity of x, is just a bunch of zeros. Okay, I'll write over two factorial, et cetera. But all the coefficients are zeros. That's always equal to zero. The Taylor series equals zero exactly for all x. But the function only equals zero when x equals zero. They're not equal except that x equals zero. A function does not have to equal its Taylor series. Here's one example, maybe the simplest example. You might wonder, could I really prove that f prime of zero is zero? I mean, okay, so f of x is a piecewise function. e to the negative one over x squared if x is not zero, and zero if x equals zero. Could I really prove f prime of zero is zero? Certainly if x is not zero, I can differentiate this function using the chain rule, right? And in fact, you know, this would be the same as uh, e to the negative x to the negative two. The chain rule would give a derivative of e to the negative x to the negative two times the derivative of that exponent, which would be positive two x to the negative three. 
And you could write this as two e to the negative one over x squared over x cubed, if you like. But that's only if x is not zero. What if x does equal zero? What is f prime of zero? Does it even exist? It seems like it should. It's the graph so flat there. Technically, I have to go back to the limit definition of the derivative. Calc one. Like that. That's calc one. Chapter two in our book. F of zero is zero, so that's nice. That's a zero. This is an F of H. So this is going to be the limit as H goes to zero. Of what is F of H? Plug it into here, which I can do because in the limit, I'm not actually letting H equal zero. It's tempting to think, oh, I should use L'Hopital's rule there. It is a zero over zero indeterminate form. Both the top and the bottom are going to zero as H goes to zero. But Without showing you the details, if you try using the L'Hopital's rule, it gets worse. It doesn't help. The derivatives you get and the new fraction you get are even more complicated. And it's even less clear what the limit is. So instead, we do something else. This is the first time I'm going to hint about complex numbers, but I'm going to talk about complex numbers more in a minute, a few minutes. Z is a common letter in math used to represent standard normal random variables. Also present values of future payments is an actuarial science. But in complex analysis, which Bethel is offering next year, and I recommend you take it, especially if you want to do advanced applications involving quantum mechanics and or fluid mechanics. Z could be a complex number. It's sort of the standard symbol for a complex number, actually a complex variable. And it turns out that even when Z is complex, this is true and can be made sense of. And it also can be made sense of if we replace Z with, oh, say, um, for example, something like one over H squared. Why am I picking one over H squared? Because I have an E to the negative one over H squared there. And you'll see what I'm doing in a few minutes. What I'm going to do here is in this expression, I'm going to replace all the z's with 1 over h squared. This is fine as long as I'm not dividing by 0. This is fine as long as I'm not dividing by 0 if h is not 0. It's no longer a Taylor series because it's not positive powers of H, it's negative powers of H really, or powers of H in the denominators. Not a Taylor series. It does have a name, it's called a Laurent series. Or maybe you should pronounce that Laurent. But everybody I have heard say this says Laurent. Laurent series is what its name is. And my purpose in showing you this is twofold. One, to show you, hey, you can do this. And secondly, to say if H is not zero, all these quantities here are positive. And therefore, this implies that E to the one over H squared is actually greater than or equal to any one of these terms by itself. And for my purposes, I'm gonna pick the second term, one over H squared. This is true if H is not zero. And why am I doing that? Hang on, I'm going to try to relate it to this. I'm going to effectively take the reciprocal of both sides now. You take the reciprocal of that thing, you get e to the negative 1 over h squared. Take the reciprocal of that thing, you get h squared. But if you take the reciprocals of both sides, you have to switch the direction of the inequality. And if h is positive, I can then divide both sides by h and keep the inequality in the same direction. And I can write e to the negative 1 over h squared divided by h is less than or equal to h squared over h, which simplifies to h. These quantities are also positive when h is positive. I can also write that. And what I can do now to verify that this thing goes to 0 as h goes to 0 is I can 
use something called the squeeze theorem. This thing is stuck between these two functions, thinking of them as functions of h. The graph we're interested in, this graph, is stuck between them. Both of those graphs go to zero as h goes to zero. Therefore, this one goes to zero. The squeeze theorem, and you can look this up, squeeze theorem implies at least the limit as h approaches zero from the right of this function is zero. You also can you do something similar as h approaches zero from the left. And that is f prime of zero. So that's a more formal proof that f prime of zero is zero, okay? It's a bit tricky. I had to use this Laurent series idea and some other subtle things, but you can prove f prime of zero is zero. And you can likewise prove f double prime of zero is zero, f triple prime of zero is zero, et cetera. Any derivative value at zero exists and is zero. Not surprising because the graph is so close to horizontal there near the origin. 